Hello and welcome to Strokes of Genius, a program that attempts to shed some light on the lives and the works of some great masters of painting. In this episode, we travel back in time to unravel the mystery that surrounds one of the greatest artists of all times, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a man of both worlds. He was a master of art and science. He was a painter, a sculptor, a musician, an architect, a scientist and an inventor. He lived in what is called the Renaissance period. The period itself began in Italy in the 15th century. The word itself means rebirth. In this period, the liberal arts like poetry, grammar, sculpture, music, architecture were restored and revitalized. It was in this period that Leonardo made his mark as an artist. Leonardo da Vinci was born in 1452 in one of the lion-colored stone houses in the town of Vinci in the Tuscan hills in Italy. The enigma of Leonardo begins with his birth. He was the illegitimate child of a woman called Caterina and a man called Piero da Vinci, a notary by profession. Right from his boyhood, Leonardo seemed to have an extraordinarily keen observation, imagination and the ability to detach himself from the world around him. Evidence suggests that he was deeply engrossed in botany, geology, the character of sunlight and shadow, the flight of birds and the motion of water. At the age of 15, Leonardo's father took him to Florence to be apprenticed under Andrea del Verrocchio, one of the most sought after artists in Italy. Here began his journey into the world of art, form and colour. Much of what Leonardo learned was influenced by the master himself, but others such as Domenico Gerlandio, Sandro Botticelli, and Antonio del Polaiolo also influenced his style. The architecture of Florence also served as a school for Leonardo. The Baptistry, Giotto's Tower, the Pazzi Chapel, the Medici Palace intrigued Leonardo and influenced his style and technique. Leonardo's earliest painting stands out without question. His master Verrocchio happened to be painting a picture of St. John baptizing Christ and it was for this painting that he asked Leonardo to paint an angel holding some garments. Although Leonardo was very young at that time, the figure that he painted was far better than the figures done by his master. Verrocchio was so amazed at his pupil's talent that he gave up painting altogether after this episode. In this painting, the pose of the little blue-robed figure is free and supple, a typical characteristic of Leonardo's paintings. In the face of the angel, one sees Leonardo's ideal concepts of human beauty, seen faintly in the feminine charm created by muffled outlines. From the outset, Leonardo saw landscapes not merely as a background for his figures. He considered man as an inextricable part of his environment, an integral part of nature. The landscape and the angel have been done in oil, a medium that had just recently been introduced to Italy. The first painting wholly produced by Leonardo is the Annunciation when he was about 20. The painting is not considered a great work of art by critics, but in the overall effect, 
some of Leonardo's characteristic features are evident in it. Leonardo's foray into painting portraits began with the portrait of Ginevra de Benci. Dating back to 1474, the painting brings to the fore the use of the chiaroscuro effect, which is the technique of using strongly contrasted areas of light and shadows. Grotesque faces fascinated Leonardo as he felt that there were beauties obverse and equally worthy of attention and definition. Leonardo left Florence for Milan in 1482. The ostensible reason behind this move was greater patronage. He felt that Lodvico Sforza of Milan would be a better patron than Medici. To establish himself with Sforza, he presented himself as a military expert, a weaponier and a musician. The Louvre version of the Madonna of the Rocks was apparently done early in his stay in Milan. This painting, full of suggestions and symbols, reveals Leonardo at his enigmatic best. He makes the use of the effect of aerial perspective in the landscape of this painting. Aerial perspective is the creation of depths in paintings by the use of gradations of color to create distinctness. Leonardo spent years studying his environment, trying to find out ways of bringing these illusions into his paintings. According to Leonardo, the atmosphere, with its light and shadows, humidity and hazes, had a unifying function, that of bringing the background and foreground into a relevant relationship. The cave is twilit and one can see the use of sfumato effect to create the illusion of moist air. The modeling of the figures is in the chiaroscuro technique, which gives the effect of the figures having no defined outlines. In the center of the painting is perhaps the most wondrous interplay of hands in all art, protecting, worshiping, blessing and pointing. This painting can very well be termed as Leonardo's farewell to early Renaissance art. In 1495, at the request of Lodvico Sforza, Leonardo began The Last Supper, a painting which captures religious and human drama. The site chosen for the painting was the wall of the refectory in the Dominican monastery of Santa Maria delle Grazie in Milan. Leonardo had been developing his ideas for The Last Supper for some 15 years, working on numerous sketches in pen and ink of the individual figures that were to appear in the painting. For the Last Supper, Leonardo used not the technique of fresco, but of tempera, employing all the rich color effects that this technique had to offer, creating a masterpiece in linear perspective. In this painting, one sees Leonardo's scientific understanding and reasoning to create ideal geometric balance within the composition.
Leonardo left Milan after the collapse of Lodvico Sforza's regime and returned to Florence. It was here that he began work on what was to become the most famous painting on earth, the Mona Lisa. Leonardo transcended the art of portraiture while painting the Mona Lisa. His subject was not only a woman, but woman. In his hands, the symbolic and the individual became one. Leonardo considered her with a disquieting lack of normal sensuality, so that she appears at once voluptuous and beautiful, and on the other hand, cold and faintly repulsive. It is, however, the enigmatic smile that continues to capture the viewer's eye, haunting him forever. The painting is not large in its dimensions, but appears to be monumental, an effect achieved by Leonardo's placement of the figure in comparison to the background. In the technique of this painting, Leonardo brought his use of the sfumato technique to perfection. This technique was used to give a shading effect by painting hundreds of infinitely thin glazes on the panel. By 1508, Leonardo's career as a painter was drawing to a close. The French had been driven out of Milan, and so at the age of 60, Leonardo found himself without a patron and without any income. In September 1513, a tired but courageous man set out for Rome. Leonardo's sole self-portrait was apparently made during his stay at Rome at the age of 62. Done in red chalk, his portrait reveals a massive furrowed forehead, piercing but sad pained eyes, a downturned mouth and a cascade of beard. The form appears to be that of a disillusioned prophet of the ancient times. Leonardo's last painting was completed in Rome. It is the Louvre's Saint John, by far the most disquieting of all his pictures. Although Leonardo was finished with painting, he was not yet finished with the world. He created the Deluge, which was a collection of 10 black chalk drawings, his personal statement portraying the end of the world. Leonardo arrived in France at the behest of King Francis I and spent his remaining days at the manor house of Clo. He died on May 2nd, 1519 at the age of 67 and was buried among princes and councillors at Ambois. Leonardo da Vinci lived by the maxim that a painter has two objectives, man and the intention of his soul. The invention of mechanical devices, the conquest of space as well as earth, the eagerness to try the untried in every field of human experience, these were his aspirations and these are our aspirations as well. We all have the potential of becoming an artist. All you need is a little observation, imagination and determination. We hope you enjoyed watching this program. Until we meet again, it's goodbye.